Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the burn after reading letter written by Roberta Laundrie to her son, Brian Laundrie? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the lawsuit, a summary of the letter relevant to the lawsuit, then offer my analysis. In the summer of 2021, a 22-year-old woman named Gabby Petito was engaged to a 23-year-old man named Brian Laundrie. The couple lived in Northport, Florida, with Brian's parents. On July 2, 2021, after visiting Gabby's family in New York, the couple departed on a trip across the country in a 2012 Ford Transit Connect minivan. They intended to spend four months driving across the country visiting and camping in national parks. On their trip, they attempted to establish a social media presence by documenting their adventure online. On August 12, when the couple was in Moab, Utah, the police pulled them over after receiving a report about a confrontation between them, but neither of them was arrested. Brian flew back to Florida on August 17, but then returned to Utah on August 23. The couple traveled to Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming on August 24. At some point between August 27 and August 29, Brian strangled Gabby and left her body near the National Park. Brian returned to Northport, Florida on September 1. He drove the Ford minivan and was alone. On September 11, Gabby was reported missing. Two days later, Brian disappeared. Gabby's body was found on September 19. A warrant was issued for Brian's arrest on September 23, but he was still nowhere to be found. On October 20, 2021, Brian Laundrie's body was found in a reserve in Florida. He had sustained a self-inflicted gunshot wound. A notebook was recovered from the scene containing a handwritten message from Brian. In the message, he confessed to the murder of Gabby Petito. Now moving to the timeline of the lawsuit. On March 11, 2022, Gabby Petito's parents, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt, filed a lawsuit against the parents of Brian Laundrie, Christopher and Roberta Laundrie. On March 30, Christopher and Roberta moved to dismiss the lawsuit, calling it baseless and frivolous. On June 30, a judge denied the motion to dismiss. The lawsuit filed by the Petito family was allowed to move forward. At the time making this video, the trial is scheduled for May 2024. Here is a summary of the complaint filed by Gabby Petito's parents against Brian Laundrie's parents. The Petito family claimed that on August 28, Brian told his parents that he murdered Gabby. This is not long before Brian returned home alone in the van. Christopher and Roberta spoke to an attorney that same day. August 28, and retained the attorney on September 2. Brian's parents did not tell the authorities about this alleged disclosure by Brian. On September 10, Roberta blocked Gabby's mother, Nicole Schmidt, on her cell phone and on Facebook. On September 14, Brian's parents, through their attorney, issued a statement which read, quote, It is our understanding that a search has been organized for Miss Petito in or near Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. On behalf of the Laundrie family, it is our hope that the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family, unquote. Gabby's parents, through an attorney, asked Brian's parents for information about Gabby's whereabouts, but Brian's parents did not respond. The lawsuit claimed that as a direct and proximate result of the maliciousness of Brian's parents, Gabby's parents suffered pain, mental anguish, inconvenience, and loss of capacity or enjoyment of life. Even though the term is never explicitly mentioned, it appears as though Gabby's parents are arguing that they were the victims of intentional infliction of emotional distress. Now moving to a summary of a letter relevant to the lawsuit. As I mentioned, the lawsuit is moving forward. One interesting development in this lawsuit is a letter written by Roberta Laundry that came to be in the possession of the FBI. It's not exactly clear how the FBI obtained the letter. One report said it was found in a closet in the laundry house. 
Another report said it was found in Brian Laundrie's backpack. And an attorney for the Laundrie family said the FBI had it for weeks when Brian's body was found. Roberta Laundrie wrote a letter to her son, Brian. On the outside of the card, there is a drawing of a bird with the word remember. On the other side, it has his name, Brian Christopher Laundrie, and in parentheses, the words burn after reading. Here is the content of this handwritten letter. Quote, I just want you to remember I will always love you, and I know you will always love me. You are my boy. Nothing can make me stop loving you. Nothing will or could ever divide us, no matter what we do, or where we go, or what we say. We will always love each other. If you're in jail, I will bake you a cake with a file in it. If you need to dispose of a body, I will show up with a shovel and garbage bags. If you fly to the moon, I will be watching the skies for your re-entry. If you say you hate my guts, I'll get new guts. Remember that love is a verb, not a noun. It's not a thing. It's not words. It is actions. Watch people's actions to know if they love you, not their words. Therefore, I am certain that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor the ruling spirits, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers from above, nor powers from below, nothing in the entire created world can separate our love, neither hostile powers, nor messengers of heaven, nor monarchs of earth. Nothing has the power to separate us. Romans 8, 38, Extended Version. Nothing can separate us, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not threats, not even sin, not the thinkable or unthinkable can get between us, not time, not miles, and miles, and miles. Unquote. The letter does not contain the name of Gabby Petito. It is undated, and there is no other indication as to when it was written. Roberta stated that she did not remember the exact date that she wrote the letter, but it was written before Brian and Gabby left Florida for New York. Roberta said they left Florida on June 2, 2021. As far as the unusual instruction, burn after reading, Roberta implied it was a play on words based on a book that Brian liked titled Burn After Writing. I guess this was sort of an inside joke. In an effort to explain the letter, Roberta said, quote, I truly loved my son and simply wanted to convey to him how much he meant to me and how much I loved him. I am sure people use phrases all the time to express to their loved ones the depths of their love. Although I chose words that I thought would be impactful with Brian given our relationship, the letter was in no way related to Gabby, unquote. Roberta indicated that she was trying to convey her love and support for her son. She wanted him to know that her love would not be diminished even though they were separated by many miles. Roberta suggested that the relationship between her and Brian was difficult and strained. She said, quote, I was trying to connect with Brian and repair our relationship as he was planning to leave home, and I hope this letter would remind him how much I loved him, unquote. Now moving to my analysis. The significance of the burn after reading letter to the lawsuit is this. If the letter was written after Gabby was murdered, then it supports the idea that Roberta knew her son, Brian, murdered Gabby. This is a key part of the lawsuit. Without the knowledge of the murder, there was no intentional infliction of emotional distress. The lawsuit has absolutely no chance of success without that alleged disclosure. Furthermore, one could argue that the letter indicates a willingness on Roberta's part to help Brian conceal his crime. For example, the part about disposing of a body using a shovel and garbage bags. This could speak to a state of mind, like being indifferent to people's feelings, or even being malicious. If the letter was written before Gabby was murdered, it would be difficult to connect to the lawsuit. It would be a stretch to argue that Roberta knew that Brian was thinking about murder or something of that nature, especially considering there is no evidence that the murder was premeditated. Considering the value of the letter in the lawsuit is really hinged on when it was written, what does the evidence support in this case? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that the letter was written after Gabby was murdered, starting with the factors that support this theory. The letter mentioned jail and body disposal. If Brian had not brought an end to his own life, he would have gone to jail. After the murder, body disposal would have been a service that Brian may have been interested in. It's curious that Roberta brought up 
two items that were relevant to Brian's highly unusual situation. After all, how many people at any given time just murdered someone? Roberta talked about how nothing would prevent her from loving Brian. This could suggest that something happened which would normally cause a person not to love another, like a homicide. The letter had an absolute and defiant tone to it. Nothing in the world was going to separate Roberta from her son. Not life or death, not power from above or below. The letter was dramatic and extreme. It appeared to be too intense for everyday communication. The words, burn after reading, appeared on the outside of the card. This makes it seem like the letter contained something Roberta did not want to be public. Her explanation for using this phrase was not believable. Also, as a side note, it demonstrates that Brian was not good at following directions. Now moving to the factors that contradict the theory that the letter was written after Gabby's murder. The tone of the letter could be considered consistent with a mother trying to bridge the gap in a challenging relationship with her son. Roberta explained that she wrote it because the relationship was difficult and strained. It is reasonable to believe that this was true. Brian was a killer. People who are capable of killing are usually hard to get along with, mostly because of the murder part. Roberta talked about Brian going to the moon and replacing her guts with new guts. She was clearly exaggerating in these instances. Perhaps she was also exaggerating when talking about jail and body disposal. The letter does not contain a reference to Gabby Petito and appears to be generic in nature, although one could argue that Roberta did that to conceal the intent of the letter. When considering the evidence, do I think the letter was written after Gabby's murder? Yes. I think that Roberta wrote it in response to finding out about the homicide. This is why she wanted it to be burned after it was read. Even though the timing of the letter is the most critical element, the letter supports one important idea regardless of when it was written. Brian knew he could tell his mother anything. That doesn't mean he did tell her anything, or specifically about the murder, but just that he knew her reaction would not be judgmental. She would always be there to help him, even if it required a lunar mission intestinal swap. Moving to the last question, do I think the lawsuit has merit? In my opinion, the lawsuit filed by Gabby's parents against Brian's parents is frivolous. Even if Brian's parents did everything that was alleged in the complaint, including having knowledge that Brian was guilty and not saying anything, there is no liability because they had the legal right not to talk. The gravamen of the complaint is that Christopher and Roberta Laundry made no statements to law enforcement or to the Petito family. Brian's parents had the right to hire an attorney and the right to remain silent. Everybody has that right, even when they are not being accused of a crime. Now, what about the statement from the Laundry's attorney when he talked about hoping that Gabby was reunited with her family? Could this be considered cruel or malicious if Brian's parents knew about the murder? In order to prove intentional infliction of emotional distress in Florida, the conduct must be outrageous. I agree that the statement was ill-advised, but I'm not sure it was outrageous. Brian's parents were in a tough spot and probably didn't know what to say. They didn't know for certain that Brian was telling them the truth if he did, in fact, mention to them that he killed Gabby. I doubt they authorized that statement with the intent of hurting the Petito family. Now moving to my final thoughts. The sentiment expressed in Roberta's letter was that she would love Brian without any conditions. This is a pretty common feeling among parents, and I don't think there is anything wrong with parents feeling that way. What would be the alternative? Parents who profess to love their children conditionally? That would be cold and callous. Despite the typical harmless nature of this sentiment, perhaps there was one unintended consequence of this unconditional love. I wonder if Brian Laundrie felt that every woman should grant him unconditional love. Maybe this was the source of his rage toward his murder victim, Gabby Petito. Those are my thoughts on the burn after reading letter. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.